In most deprived rural communities in Africa, it is common to see children fulfill their social responsibility to parents, but their right to education is far from reality. <laughs> This trend has been with us in Africa for several decades, creating a large constituency of illiterate adults who usually engage in subsistence farming and other low-income activities that can barely feed the family all year round. The vicious cycle of creating illiterate adults is one of many reasons for the underdevelopment of many countries in Africa. This trend must end if Africa is to achieve the Millennium Development Goals. This therefore calls for an innovative approach to education. On this score, the School for Life program comes in handy. It is a functional literacy program that brings literacy to out-of-school children between the ages of eight and uh, 14 years. It is a program which is flexible, it is child-centered, it is a program that uses mother tongue literacy, and it is community-based. Majority of the School for Life graduates have been to high institutions of learning. Abukar Hafiz in picture is receiving a presidential award, a former graduate of the School for Life program. Cecilia Mfoke, who went through the School for Life program, now works at the END hospital. This demonstrates the fact that given the opportunity, children in rural communities can realize their full potential with interventions like the School for Life program. There are many children in rural Ghana who can excel if the complementary basic education policy is implemented. Through the School for Life, in fact, I've achieved a lot because as of now, I'm having GSS certificate through School for Life. If I had not joined the School for Life to learn how to read and write, I wouldn't have registered and write the GSS and have the certificate. I was eight years old when I started the School for Life. When I finished the School for Life, I moved into primary five. I am in Bimbala Senior High School. I am one of the product of School for Life. I have completed Bimbila Senior High School and offered general arts and I have qualified to further my education into teacher training college but due to financial restraints I find it difficult to do so. My name is Ibrahim Abdel Nasser. I come from Tualongwayamba in the northern region of Ghana. I was enrolled into School for Life Literacy class in 1999. Currently, I am a student at the University for Development Studies offering a course, offering a program in integrated development studies. The SFO model as one of the strategies in addressing the challenges of access to and quality basic education in rural communities continue to attract the attention of several NGOs and CBOs, including Partners in Participatory Development, PAPADEV, through EBIS, and the Convenient Learning and Strategic Solutions on National Education, Class 1 project, among others. We are in the Upper East region to witness the performance of a local NGO, the Class 1 project, which is replicating the SFL methodology. My name is Santo Anegia. I am the Executive Director for Roots and Futures and also the Director of the Class 1 Replication Project. Um, we bumped onto a staff of School for Life sometime in 2002 who introduced us to the School for Life concept of functional literacy education. We mobilized a few of our colleagues when we returned back to China and we went on a field visit to the Northern Region where we went to the field to witness um, a School for Life literacy class in session. We interacted with the children and later they performed some drills for us to see what they had learned. And we said, oh, can you spell our names? And they said, oh, yes. Then someone was randomly chosen to come and spell our names. These learners were in class for only four months, but they were able to write our names. They wrote Santwa, Chirawra, Alechima, and Dasam Pukparaga. And we were amazed and we said, we need to replicate this as quickly as possible. And we got funding from School for Life. And we started 11 projects in 2009. We graduated about 261 uh, learners, and out of that, about 60% of them have integrated into a formal school. 
We are in the second phase of the program and uh, we have been able to open 12 classes of 21 uh, learners each. Um, that's about 275 um, learners. We are hoping to be able to graduate um, up to 80% of these children uh, who are expected to integrate into a formal school. It is heartwarming for Cairo community to have a primary school ready to absorb graduates from the SFL program. This seamless integration of SFL graduates into the formal school system is a motivation for children in the community who would have missed out of formal education to edge on for a bright future. Kagwa Komadzio was given out for marriage, but for the timely intervention of the Class 1 project. Now, she is on course to fulfill her ambition. I am Kagwa Komadzio. I am a son of a school in Class 1. Lily and now people are two family and now people. I am a son of people who serve Jesus. I am a son of Jesus who serve Jesus. Over the last year, we have registered um, an outstanding success story. That is the establishment of a new formal school, which is in Kawene here in New Nakong. The school is made up of products who graduated from the Class 1 project in 2010. And because they are so far away from the nearest uh, formal schools in Katiu and Nakong, they said if we don't have a school here, there's no way we are going to be able to go into the formal school. So we appealed to the education authorities and I said, this is a great idea. If you can start something, we can lend a helping hand. And the communities agreed, they built a shed, you can see it at the background. And then the, the, the parliament chief also made a contribution. We got a piece of land and we started the school. The National Youth Employment Program also gave us um, a volunteer teacher and who is managing the school together with two other volunteers from the community. And you can see the kids are very enthusiastic. And we know that this is a very good success story because without the school, there is no way these number of children would have access to formal education because in terms of distance, the school is so far away, their communities are so far away from the nearest schools. And we think that this is something that we need to be talking about and we should provide as much assistance as possible for these kids to continue to remain in school, graduate, and be able to realize their full potential as full-fledged Ghanaians. This is Kanania community in the Kasna Nankana West District of the Upper East Region. One of several communities where the Class 1 project is replicating the SFL program. Here, the zeal to learn is expressive in the children as they clinch to any opportunity to acquire knowledge. As if to say to the SFL program, thank you for giving us the prospect. This is an option to create a buoyant future for themselves, just as some of their colleagues have done in other communities. Papa Dev, in partnership with other organizations to implement projects regarding to education, HIV, AIDS, environment, among others, went into partnership with EBIS West Africa to replicate SFL methodology in complementary education in 2004-2005. The SFL methodology has replicated it in the Solatuna Kalva district for the past four years. We have been able to roll out about 1,805 out-of-school children back into the educational mainstream. The government, and for that matter, the Ghana Education Service, recognizes the important role the School for Life has played as far as this complementary basic education is concerned. Since they have worked over the past 12 years, at least they have a lot of experiences that they can share 
with the Ghana Education Service so that by the year 2015, as we've all targeted, you'll be able to get all the children out of school into the normal school system. And by this, we will be achieving the Millennium Development Goal and also the constitutional mandate of ensuring free compulsory access to basic education for all school children in the country. Innovations for Poverty Action IPA is collaborating with School for Life in the implementation of the Teacher Community Assistant Initiative project. Here is a depiction about the collaboration between the two organizations. At IPA, we thought that School for Life was the partner we should work with. The fact that they've been working with children from 8 to 14 years old to get them from non-literate to literacy, and they had been able to prove that this can be done in nine months. And so IPA wants to learn from the methodology that School for Life has used to achieve this. SFL will also be providing training to the master trainers from GES who will then be used to train the National Youth Employment Program beneficiaries who will be providing the numeracy and literacy instruction within the schools to the children who are lagging behind. And then the final way in which SFL will be working with IPA is to support um, with the monitoring of the program. So SFL is providing their technical expertise in terms of going to some of the different schools to see how the program is being applied and to be able to then give feedback to IPA on some of the things that can be reincorporated into the retrainings to improve the program. Having been on the field researching into the functionality of the SFL program, who else can best attest to its credibility? Associates for Change in um, 2005 carried out the impact assessment for School for Life and we've been working for school, with School for Life for about the last seven years. We spent about one full year working with School for Life on a participatory impact assessment of their program in Northern Ghana. And it was designed in order to track the outcomes, the life outcomes and the learning outcomes of children that had gone through this School for Life program in Northern Ghana. Um, during that assessment and evaluation period, we discovered that the methodology that School for Life was using, the impact assessment, discovered that it was quite effective both in the non-formal sector, that's in the sector in which children were work, are working in community levels with their School for Life facilitators, and then we found that the integrative, the levels in which they were able to integrate into the mainstream system were quite high. Over 80% of them, having finished the School for Life program, were able to integrate into the formal education system. Based on the study, we found that um, the children that had gone through the School for Life program, because they were reading and writing in mother tongue, were able to quickly accelerate into the um, second language. Those that were integrated, the studies that we did in the north of Ghana suggested that those that had been integrated into the primary school system at P3, 4, and 5 were, were performing very, very well in both second language and first language subjects. With all these assertions about the practicality of the SFL methodology, School for Life, which operates from its head office in Tamale, the regional capital of the Northern Region, has an extra advantage of a rock-solid human resource base, dating back to its founding members, to the current staff whose efforts have given credence to the establishment of a learning and development center. This is no mean achievement, and the staff is committed to quality services. One of the key successes of School for Life is because of the level of supervision and monitoring both by the field staff and the head of his staff and also by the community members. The supervisors do daily supervision of the classes. The coordinators do some sort of sampling, co uh, monitoring and then the head of his staff also does the same sampling monitoring from district to district. Then the uh, the, the local committee on each part does the monitoring, that's also daily, because they are staying with the, uh, in the community and they, they can do daily monitoring of the, the, the classes. Unlike some other areas where even children attend up to junior high school and are not literate, they are not so numerous. But School for Life has been able to achieve this. So if this methodology is taken 
anywhere, introducing the children with the mother tongue and gradually introducing them to the second language, be it English or French, the children will be able to continue and will do very well in the formal school. It is interesting to note that through methodical research, these books and other learning materials are developed by the SFL Learning and Development Center to suit the learning environment and capability of the children. Periodically, this group of experts in curriculum and book development meet to review the curriculum materials. At this session, they are working at developing a new book after field visits, research, monitoring and evaluation. School for Life is into functional literacy program. For that matter, the curriculum that we develop reflects the aspirations of the community in which we find ourselves. The curriculum of School for Life is about literacy, numeracy, and livelihood skills development. The essence of the SFL methodology is as equally useful to schools in urban areas like Etoy Royal, a private school in Tamale. A teacher at Etoy Royal is here demonstrating her skills after acquiring training from the SFL Learning and Development Centre. Are you all ready? Yes! Are you ready? Yes! 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 Yes!
provides teachers to some understaffed rural community schools. Certainly the challenges of education are so enormous that no one organization, no one body can uh, overcome them. It needs a concerted effort. So that at the end of the day, our young people will benefit. And education in the north will be uplifted. Thank you. Then when power comes to take this position, it becomes one. Um, when B comes to, to the position, it takes one. Give the PI. the PI. And then Ba will become BAM. This training program by School for Life is a process of giving this novelty a firm foundation to realize the School for Life's mission. School for Life is not relenting in its effort to and ensure quality basic education. Used for linguistic block. It's just a block. And you have you can decide to have pictures here, a picture here, picture here, picture over here, picture here to and that. And when a child just rolls it down, the picture that comes up, the child will discuss about the picture. So you mention the name of the picture or the name associated with the picture and then tell your colleagues what the picture is all about. This is the opening session of a training program to strengthen the capacities of community support teachers who teach in formal schools in remote rural communities. The SFL District Coordinator for East Gonja is here welcoming the community support teachers. It is an SFLGS collaboration to contribute towards the provision of quality education to deprived rural children. Measures such as these are in line with the SFL mission of ensuring access to and quality basic education for all children. After receiving training from SFL, it is the turn of trainers to pass on knowledge and skills to these CSTs. In the classroom, when you realize that children attention when they are bored, or yeah. children's attention is not on what you are teaching. You understand? That's, you are drawing their attention. That is all. Then, not necessarily always taking the, the lash. Kind, kind, kind. You are a contributing factor to the boredom, and as well as they are also a contributing factor to what? The boredom. What way will you get? Eh? But, what are if you bring it here? Ah, if you bring it here, if you bring it this way, fat. You understand that? And if you change this vowel, if you change this vowel to maybe something like who, what way will it get here? Eh? Fat. Okay? Fat. Fat. Well, we have to, I don't think we have any way. But, well, I want to, what we are doing here, we are going to take soup. And then this one here, food. You understand that? It is time now to put the knowledge and skills acquired into practice. The CSTs in groups are developing teaching and learning materials from available materials. This is to encourage rural teachers to be innovative in the use of local materials which are readily available for use as teaching and learning materials to facilitate the teaching and learning process. The School for Life approach can be replicated in other parts of Africa. We have received inquiries from La Côte d'Ivoire. We have also received inquiries from Ethiopia in East Africa. And there are prospects that the approach that School for Life uses, which has put through so many hundreds of thousands of children to school, uh, can actually be replicated in other parts of this world. So together, we can act to put every child in school. We call on other organizations and institutions, the Association for the Development of Education in Africa, ADEA, and, and many more uh, stakeholders and interested parties and collaborators to come and to learn from the School for Life Learning and Development Center, located in Tamale, in the northern region of Ghana, West Africa. With all these affirmations about the viability of the program, the SFL methodology deserves replication by other organizations in your country, region, district, or community. All children, especially those in remote communities, deserve not just education, 
but quality basic education that is relevant to their circumstances. SFL has a solid resource base ever ready to offer consultancy services anywhere in Ghana and beyond. Give your child a bright future. Contact the Learning and Development Center now for consultancy services to replicate SFL methodology in your area.